Will Cam Rising be Utah's starting quarterback in 2024? What does Coach Witt think about Utah's matchup with the Oregon Ducks and the state of his program coming off the monumental win against the USC Trojans? And can Utah keep winning games despite all the injuries they continue to suffer? All that and more on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by Prize Picks. You can go to prizepicks.com slash Locked On College and use the code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. My name is JT Wister, still former intern inside the Abuse of Utah Athletic Department. If this is your first time joining our show, make sure you guys like and subscribe. would love to interact with you guys in the comments. And I saw a couple of interesting comments in the videos I posted over the last two days that I'm actually going to be addressing in the middle of this video itself, just because I think there are interesting points that some of you fans have brought up. And first, we're going to be talking about Cam Rising returning in 2024, also diving into Coach Witt's comments to the media in during his weekly press conference and closing it out with can Utah just keep finding ways to win despite all the injuries they continue to suffer? But as I stated, first want to start, Will, with Will Cam Rising return in 2024. Now, I'm sure some of you will be listening saying we should be focused on Oregon right now. And don't worry, the Utah football team is. And we're going to be diving into, obviously, that in the Oregon game in the latter two segments when we discuss the injuries and just what Coach Witt said. But I, I do think this is a massive story. I mean, I, I know we're all focused on the U.S. We're, we're still focused on USC and now shifting the focus to Oregon. But just step back and think about it. And I know I'm in a little different position than maybe all of you in terms of thinking about this because this is what we, my entire offseason for Locked On Utes. I mean, we do this five days a week still. How many episodes? I've lost count. I'm sure some of you didn't because you were getting irritated with how much I talked about Cam Rising being out. But it was a huge deal for this team. It will still more than likely be the reason that Utah does not accomplish their goals they, it's, they set out to. I hope that Utah can win a Pac-12 championship with Bryson Barnes. I think they have a chance to do so incredibly hard <laughs> just because of how hard it is to win with a guy in Bryson who I think is a fine quarterback, but still a game manager. And we'll be diving into those comments. I know some of you don't like that. I called him a game manager. I'm still going to stick by them and defend them here shortly, but it, it, this is just massive news. I mean, it's just a crazy saga that at least concludes as it pertains to Cam Rising playing in 2023. Now, the sequel, Will Cam Rising stay at Utah again and play in 2024, is going to be another lengthy one, uh, but one we're just going to talk about now and then not discuss for the remainder of the regular season. Um, so once again, Will Cam return in 2024? I, I think the odds are actually decently high. I This is not insider information or anything. As just someone who has been following what has been going on with Cam, it just, I just don't see him. It would be weird for him to leave, like just on this note of like, you know, wanting to come back, trying to play, do everything he can. Not that part of it would be weird, but five years ago, that's probably what would happen, or even three years, maybe four years ago. Yeah. It's just before NIL. NIL has changed everything. I, I think Cam has a chance when coming back to Utah to very well because of NIL. And once again, I don't know the state of the Utah and how NIL works at the exact dollar figures and amounts, but I know they just got all the players' trucks. We know that the players in general have been well-funded NIL-wise, just in general. Like, there's deals. We see their faces on commercials pop up. You, The most popular football player in Salt Lake City, the, the just the city itself right now, would be Cam Rising still, even though he hasn't played this season. He's the one who drives everything. He drives a ton of content for this show. I mean, you guys, just the data shows, are more likely to click on these videos when Cam Rising is discussed. And we like to talk about all things Utah football, but... When Cam is what you guys want to talk about, it's obviously one of the things we're going to discuss too because I do listen to what you guys tell me based on the views that you generate for each video. So uh, will Cam return? I Once again, I just think NIL makes it very likely. Cam will more than likely, in fact, I feel really good about saying he just he's probably going to go undrafted in the draft. I mean, you're talking about a guy who hasn't played in a year. He is not a great athlete. He's a, you know, kind of a skillful runner, like just picks his spots really well, extremely tough. The arm strength isn't there. All the things that draft analysts love to, you know, scan over through the process and analyze. Cam is not a 
you know, combine warrior. He's not going to do his best stuff at the combine. He's going to do his best stuff on the field. And he could be a valued member of a team as a future backup. But since he hasn't played football in over a year, probably a third string fighting for a practice squad spot. Just think about how many talented quarterbacks there are in the NFL. And this year's college quarterback class, all guys who are going in that are pretty good. And they've played football more recently than Cam Rising. So I just feel like Cam's best shot to play is to come back to Utah. And he can also get compensated for it, whereas he wouldn't if this was five years ago and his best financial route would be the NFL. Staying at Utah is his best financial route. That's clear based on the state of the NIL and just and just the undrafted free agent money. is It's still good, but it, it's not start power five starting quarterback money today, especially when you're a team as good as Utah are and you have shown the ability to raise NIL funds as they did. Also, I think Cam would want to come back because – not only is he going to start and be able to play, which that's the whole reason you work so hard and do everything you do is to play the games. It's to play with this talented roster. Yes, some of the players off this year's Utah team are going to be gone. One of them very well could likely be Joan Ellis, by the way, because that man is shooting up draft boards and he has been exceptional. But the pass rush should still be good next year. Lander Barton will be back. When you're talking about, well, we don't know about Cole Bishop. We know Sione Vaki's back for another year. Why would Cam Rising not want to play with him? Mikey Matthews coming to the fold still. We already mentioned Sione Vaki too. Other talented pass catchers for this team, you know, whether it is, I, I don't know the state of Devon Vele's eligibility. Maybe he could stay another year, maybe not. I, I just, I, I feel bad that it worked out for him where he's not able to get maximized as much. Although I do like that Utah involved him more in the passing game this past week, but just such a talented defense. Staying with Andy Ludwig, an offensive coordinator, knows how to maximize what Cam Rising does and puts him in positions to succeed. They just have a good relationship about what will work too. So, yeah, I mean, just if Cam wants to play, first and foremost, I don't know what Cam's goals are, but there's no doubt that his best route to playing football in 2024 is staying at Utah. He's not going to be an NFL starter next year, and he can make more money staying at Utah too. So I have no idea what Cam Rising is going to do, but I do think there's a high probability he stays at Utah, whether it is it's all the reasons I just laid out, financial-wise, the ability to compete-wise, and – just to continue to represent, he clearly loves playing football at Utah. And I think that's something that matters too when you're talking about going to a new or NFL organization. Plus the NFL future, if he does well, can still be a backup and he will definitely raise his stock by coming back next year. And next year's quarterback class is a lot weaker too. So if he plays well, would have a chance to get himself drafted as a day three pick. Also, then it becomes a question of, okay, so if Cam might stay, what about Brant? Brant to me is less likely. I see a more 50-50 on Brant versus Cam, just, and once again, no inside information on any of this. This is just what I feel trying to read into the situation. I feel Cam is a set potential at the 70% to come back. That's just my prediction on it. When I look at the situation, brand is much more 50, 50. There are so many more roster spots for tight ends. Now, even, even quarter tight ends. Now you can do so many things versatile. There's four legit tight ends, maybe even five to go to a practice squad quarterbacks. Most organizations only have three, maybe four in the rare instance. So just so many room for pass catchers and, you know, camp uh, Brant still might be an H back. That's where he was listed on Mel Kuyper's draft board or big board when he released that still and had him up there. Brant, the question is just going to be how healthy is he going to get for testing and all of those, those areas. And those are the unknowns that I don't know how healthy he's going to be. So he, I, there's no way Brant Keithy after not playing a year and a half of college football is going to be a draft in the first two days. Could he maybe be a sixth, seventh round pick? I think potentially, and I think he could very well, once he gets healthy, show the potential that he should have been drafted higher than that. But with the medical being what it is and just having not played football in a while, how's he going to look off that? The testing numbers, we'll see where that's all at. People are going to be concerned about that. But if Brant wants to erase all those concerns, he could come back to Utah for another year. But he, he's a guy that I think would have an easier time finding a home in the NFL than Cam Rising just because of the, once again, just how essential tight ends are to success right now. And uh, I don't feel like there's as many quality tight ends. as I still feel like there's a lot of pretty good quarterbacks in the NFL, despite what uh, their play sometimes may tell us <laughs> throughout the week. So that's going to be a driving cop topic of conversation until it's announced whether what Cam and Brant are going to do. And we'll continue to cover it and follow along with it here at Locked On Utes. But let's turn our attention to the Oregon Ducks as Utah welcomes a top 10 team 
at Rice Eccles Stadium for another year. And as much as people bash on the Pac-12, Utah's this has kind of been what Utah's had to deal with for a couple of years now. When you go back to 2021, it was Oregon. Last year it was USC. This year it's going to be Oregon. And Utah's fared pretty well against those top 10 teams. Can they keep it up? Coach Witt seems to think there's a possibility based on the way his team is playing right now. And I shouldn't say possibility. Obviously, he believes he's going to win. He just didn't make a direct correlation and quote to that. But that's what this next segment is for. It's Witt's translator. That's going to be up next where we decipher what Kyle Whittingham's comment to the media truly mean that will be occurring in one second but first i want to talk to you guys about our great friends at linkedin jobs these days every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business you want to be 100 certain that you have access to the best qualified cans available that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free i really like linkedin jobs because even back when i was first entering the hiring process it got my name out there and allowed me opportunities with great employers and there are so many other hardworking kids who just got out of college or just hardworking people out there in general who are ready to get to work. And that's what LinkedIn jobs can help you find those qualified candidates because you can go to add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. They have simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions to apply. I also want to remind you guys on Friday that locked on college football kickoff live. It will be available at 11 a.m. Eastern time on every locked on college YouTube channel. College football kickoff live will cover the playoff implications. Those are really starting to matter and heat up with the CFP rankings de debuting very soon, covering the biggest games, the biggest storylines in the sport. Locked on college football kickoff live has you covered. I made an appearance on their show last week. I'm still up in the air. If I will be this week, I don't know, but Utah, Oregon, the biggest game this week. So we'll see what uh, happens there. But even if it's not me, I know it's going to be Spencer McLaughlin. So you'll definitely get some Utah versus Oregon content on that show. So make sure you guys check out and find locked on college football kickoff live each Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time on locked on Utes or any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. All righty, coming back into this one, let's talk about Witt's press conference. Uh, a lot of interesting quotes I, I felt like throughout that uh, I thought would be fun to dive into. Uh, so first thing, just talked about that, how this team is hanging in there and battling adversity. You can tell Witt is really proud of this group. I mean, it would have been so easy for Utah to just pack it up and go home, for lack of a better word, this season, right? To kind of just be like, go oh, ho-hum, like guys be a little worried about their brand. This is things that happened in college football in other programs, but it's not what happens with Utah. And just that next man up mentality. The coaches do a great job of preaching it, but also got to credit the leaders on this team for getting those other players who do step up to buy in. The guys who've stayed healthy all year, a Satala Laumea, for example, a Jaquin and Jackson's been in and out, but even him, like who are galvanizing their teammates. Like we can do this. Like even though you're like, you didn't start the season for us. You can come in. You know how hard you've worked. You're capable of making plays, and Utah has continued to make plays, and they continue to find ways to win. So got to believe that Coach Witt is extremely proud of them. He said Oregon has no weakness. Um, offensively, they're pretty close. Like, I mean, they run the ball well. Bo Nix, they throw the ball really well. It's the best. It's one of the best offenses, and maybe the best offense. I don't know. It's just still USC, but the things. But Utah's had just Caleb's number. Well, they made Bo Nix struggle last year, but – Phoenix, especially this year, is firing all cylinders. True Heisman contender there. So no weakness. I think that there's still some things defensively with them, like their secondary you can make plays against. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if Utah has the passing game, whether it is Bryson or I think the Utah receivers are good, but not great. That's where I'm curious to see how that matchup unfolds. But I do think Utah could make a couple big plays, but they've been really good. And Oregon actually leads the conference in rushing offense. I, you could see, this is just a theory once again, like, I don't know this, but I really thought like you could see the pain in coach Witt's eyes when he says that, like, that's one of the stats. Like he, it looks like he just loves the most, like he wants to lead in that statistic. So I'm sure it always irks him a little bit when, uh, when someone else is leading it there. Like, I think he's like, Oh, good for Oregon. They're doing this. Like that shows how formidable they are, but I'm sure it's part of the back in his head. He's like, that's the stat. Like my teams are supposed to be leading because that's the kind of football we like to play. So I just, I thought that was a little funny, uh, a funny thing in there too. And, uh, Oregon leads the conference too. I mean, they're top three in almost every defensive category too. So really elite playmakers on that side of the ball too. And, you know, both Utah and Oregon, one loss teams with their backs against the wall as it pertains to a Pac-12 championship game berth. It doesn't feel, it's it's starting to not feel like a two loss Pac-12 
Pac-12 team is going to make the championship game. Utah was able to do that last year. I, I don't see that happening because at this point in the season, you have Utah with just one Pac-12 loss, Oregon State with just one, Washington with one, Oregon with one. And even though we're all down on USC, and yes, they have a lot of issues, they still only have one Pac-12 loss. So yes, their college football playoff hopes are done. Pac-12 championship game playoffs or just Pac-12 championship game appearance, not done at all. So a lot of teams, so it's really starting to feel like we are going to have two one-loss teams facing off in the Pac-12 championship game, which means one team from Utah or Oregon probably going to be eliminated from that race come Saturday. And what a spectacle it's going to be again. College game day. Pat McAfee show will be out there. Big noon kickoff. I don't know if their pregame show is there, but I know Gus Johnson, uh, Jenny Taft, and Joel Klatt are all going to be there. So awesome that Utah gets one of the, the main crew for Fox. They had Kurt Herbie and Fowler calling them earlier this season. Uh, you know, they've had Todd Blacklid, Sean McDunham over the years. Um, Benetti, I thought, killed it this past week. Him and Hubert, I think they do a great job together. And I appreciate those two in particular. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of their names, but I, man, they're just, their love for the rivalry and just the Utah and USC going at it and how great the game was is something I, as a fan who love it that much too, can really appreciate. Those guys sounded like they're having a blast and they feel lucky to be there, which I always appreciate when. That that is how it is. Like you're a fan, you come off as like you're loving what you're doing and passionate about it. And I think most of the broadcasters in college sports obviously do that, but they just especially were just so fired up to be at that matchup. It was something I really appreciated. Uh, moving on from that, uh, talked about Bryson Barnes was also discussed, and uh, Coach Witt said that he just continues to grow and develop, and he does a nice job running the offense. This is where a lot of people said like Bryson is not a game manager. Look. I really like Bryson. I think he does a lot of good things. There's a reason that Utah will split Bryson out a lot and have Jaquin and Jackson and Sione Vaki get carries because the running game is very strong with those guys there. And yes, I know that they will, if Cam was in, maybe they would do something like that. I just, I don't think you would take Cam rising off the ball that much. I just think that it's more so the passing game is not as potent with Bryson. He can make some nice throws. He made some nice throws in this game. Also had a bad turnover, had a couple of misses, missed reads. But he played really well overall, but he is still a game manager to me. Bryson is not capable of putting this team on his back, and he can make a play late in the game like he did, but Bryson was never going to go into the Coliseum and just you know, march up and down the field and drive after drive like Cam Rising did last year, uh, be able to put the team on his back. like that was Bryson was able to make a play, and then the running game would make a play. Like Bryson is a cog in Utah's success. He's not the driving force in it. So did want to clear that up. Also, people are saying Utah beating USC was not an upset. I'm sorry. Look, I know that Utah has dominated the rivalry in the past, like the couple of years we beat them. But I just if I had told all of you before the season that, and I even said I thought Utah was going to win the game just based on how things had played out. But like, I also acknowledge that would have been a monumental upset. And the more likely outcome is USC winning at home, coming off the loss. The Trojans with Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley. And once again, just like Utah still trying to find their identity offensively, even though I like the signs I saw against Cal was not a sure thing that they were going to look as sharp as they did. So no, just Utah, USC was favored by everyone. You're on the road. Anytime you're on the road at a top 20 team and like you're close within the rankings, it's an upset victory to me. So Utah, absolutely upset USC in that that scenario and uh what a thrilling fashion it was to upset him though too uh continuing with uh, the comments he uh coach Witt actually said that they felt like they overreacted to a bad performance from Bryson and uh I mean I think we all overreacted to a bad performance from Bryson I think that's something that uh that we're all in on there and uh, all that matters now is they got the they got the right guy in there and he's doing his thing right now in Bryson Barnes and doing enough of his thing. I know because I was just technically criticizing him a little bit, calling him a game manager, but he's doing he's still doing enough to help this team win, which deserves credit. Uh talked about getting more feel and more reps has just allowed him to be more confident. That makes sense now that he's getting the all of the number one snaps. It just sounds like he's becoming he's always been a leader, but even more of a leader in the locker room, too. Uh talked about Sioni is going to play more on offense. He has to. He's just such an electric playmaker for this team. He's their best big play threat, which is insane. But his just natural feel and instincts, which Coach Witt highlighted, are so evident. That cut he made against USC was in the second touchdown, unreal stuff. His ability to, you know, just the speed. I mean, on those short wheel routes out of the backfield, like the Trojans couldn't even cover him. 
and just the ability to make guys miss in and outside the hole. Good decision making when the keep runs inside or bounce them to the outside. Vaki's a stud offensively, and he's got to continue to play there a lot to, because Utah does need him more offensively than they need him defensively, even though he will still play a lot defensively. Because, you know, Nate Ritchie's continuing to grow. We see Jonathan Hall, who's done some nice things, Coach Witt said. So, yeah, I think that we'll still see Vaki, but uh, they'll mix it up a little bit too. And uh, especially with Cole Bishop back now, I think the lineup will really see a lot of is what we saw against USC, where it's a lot of Cole Bishop, Teo Johnson with Miles Battle, JT Broughton, and Zamaya Vaughn on the field, which Coach Witt went on his well, that was asked about it, but really highlighted Zamaya. Said he was coming into one of his own, and that Battle played his best game as a Ute. I, I agree with that. I thought Battle was physical, tackling, and made some nice plays in coverage too. Yes, they got beat. It's USC. Everyone gets beat a time or two against that Trojans potent offense, and Zamaya. You barely heard Zamaya's name in coverage. He was lights out, I thought, and did a really good job against Brendan Rice, one of the better receivers in the Pac-12 this season, and made some nice plays in those uh, receiver screens they tried to get going too. So, yeah, the final thing he said that I thought was noteworthy was he just talked about how the O-line is gelling better. They absolutely are. They are playing much better. It's allowing them to generate more movement up front. Still some things for them to improve on. That's, I Witt didn't say that, but – when you turn on the tape and we have, we hooked went up to a lie detector, he would say the same thing with some of the pressures and things they let up on Bryson, especially with defensive lines like Oregon's Washington's still coming up. He would definitely say that they need to continue to play better, but they were really good against USC still overall. Just you got to be so good to be able to beat these Oregon and Washington teams because the margin for error is very small. And one of the things that makes that margin for error so small is all the injuries that Utah has suffered this season. We're going to talk about if Utah can continue to keep winning despite all the injuries they have suffered in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends and one of the sponsors of today's show in Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you can, in, including pros and sharks, you can can pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And NFL season in the books as it pertains to week seven that was just wrapped up. So what do you guys think is going to happen this coming week? Do you think that the Ravens, do you think Lamar Jackson is going to be able to keep going the success he's had? Do you think Travis Kelsey is going to continue to have these great games with Taylor Swift in attendance? So all those things are on the table. Like Travis Kelsey, do you think he's going to have more than 50 yards? That's you can get in on the action if you believe he will at prize picks because you can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. You can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. All righty, coming back to close this one out. Talk about can Utah keep winning despite the injuries? They can. Going to be incredibly challenging. And it starts this week against Oregon because you need to be at your best when you're playing top 10 teams. And Utah is not at their best, clearly. They are looking very good right now off the victory to USC. But even that, it's like now Lander Barton's gone. When you're talking about the injuries that Utah has suffered season-ending-wise to this point, Cam Rising, Brant Keithy, Thomas Yasmin, Micah Pittman, Mackay Bernard, Chris Curry, Logan Fano, Lander Barton. I think that's everyone. I apologize if I forgot anyone else. It's insane. I mean, Utah should, in no way should Utah be 6-1 and one and already bowl eligible with all those players missing. If you had told me that all those players would have not played a game before the season in which I predicted Utah to go 10-2, and two, and repeat as Pac-12 or three Peters Pac-12 champs make it. I would have drastically changed my prediction. I would have still projected Utah to get to bowl eligible, but I probably would have predicted an eight and four record. And maybe that is, and that's still what Utah may end up finishing because they do have to play. I think the Arizona game is tough. Obviously, Oregon and Washington really challenging, but they can keep winning games because of the depth they have at those positions. Look, let's just go down the list I highlighted. Cam Rising is out, obviously. Bryson Barnes has shown to be a very capable game manager who can run the offense and do some nice things to help this Utah football team win. Whether that is, if guys get open, he can make hit them. He can escape pressure in some instances. He will take a bad sack from time or two and maybe throw an interception, but he's shown the ability to do that and has helped this team win in tough road games before. Last year it was Washington State. This year it was the Coliseum. So you got to replace, you got one of the better backup quarterbacks in college football, Bryson Barnes. I still believe that. I got off that high horse. I overreacted. Like Coach Witt said with his stuff, I felt the same way. Bryson Barnes is still that level of backup. 
Brant Keithy and Thomas Yasmin out. This is where it's nice that you have Landon King really stepping up. And as a pass catcher, I really like King. I think he's a good route runner, like the length, the ability to create some separation there. Definitely needs to get stronger, but he throws his body around when he gets in there and is a physical blocker, makes some nice plays. And the improvisation too, he was running a route um, going away from where Bryson rolled out. He kind of stopped and then realized where Bryson was rolling to and ran back to the other side of the field to be to, to help his quarterback out, give him a target, and caught the huge touchdown for Utah there. So you're still going to get production out of your tight end spot. Uh, Micah Pittman, it, yes, it's very disappointing in terms of what we thought Pittman would accomplish this season. But when you're talking about the three receivers right now for Utah in a – as I just blank on the answer for some reason, Devon Vele, Mikey Matthews, Money Parks, and still want to see Emory Simmons get a couple more opportunities. I know it just, he had the run drop and it just hasn't gone the way, but uh, he was a guy I was really excited about. So we'd love to see him and in, incorporate at least a little more. But um, yeah, that's a solid receiving core for Utah. I think you got a deep threat in Money Parks, the shifty Mikey Matthews, and the overall number one in Devon Vele, who can make some tough catches and just is the, can run routes, does a little bit of everything well, especially blocking too is another thing for him. So you got some receivers there. Running back-wise, that's where no Mekhi Bernard, no Chris Curry, but you do have Juquin and Jackson, who's healthy and looking like a beast currently. And then, of course, you also got Sione Vaki, who's been a revelation for the youth on the offensive side of the ball as both a running back and a pass-catching back. Then when you're looking at the defensive side of the ball, Logan Fano was playing so well this season. You hate to see a season come to an end with an injury, but if you're talking about who's going to step up on the defensive line for Utah, defensive end-wise, Connor O'Toole and Van Fillinger, very good. Van Fillinger just won Pac-12 Defensive Lineman of the Week after getting a sack on Caleb Williams, made a couple other nice plays throughout the game, especially when he forced that fumble. And then Connor O'Toole was the guy coming into the season that Coach Witt said was the best pass rusher on this defensive line. O'Toole has had a half a sack last week, I think, and had a legit sack this week. So you have three legitimate defensive ends that Utah Utes do, and that's good enough in college football, especially. Most teams don't even have one. Utah's three, and one of them is the best pass rusher in college football in Jonah Ellis. So Utah's depth is still good defensive end-wise. And the last one is Lander Barton, just another one that you hate to see happen. But when you're looking at it, you have a linebacker in Levi DeMuni who was all Pac-12 a year ago and has been really good when he's seen the field. So an expanded role for him, he's going to shine in it, just like he did when Corinne Reed was forced to miss time, and he stepped up and excelled there. I think same thing with uh, – Karene Reed and Levine DeMuni, they're really going to do well together. Utah will miss Lander, the physicality, and Coach Wood even said he thought he might have played his best game as a Ute in that USC game, even though he did end up getting injured so disappointingly, Where and just speedy recovery to Lander Barton and all these guys as well. Just This is the tough part of the game, injuries. You hate to see it happen. But once again, I mentioned DeMuni. Like, Utah has the depth in places. That's not even mentioning a guy like Fotu or, of course, Justin Medlock, who we're all high on going into the season. Utah has depth all over the field. It's the state of the program's in. The program is strong enough where there are multiple players waiting in the wings that could be starting at other really good programs too. And when they get those opportunities, they're ready. So give this Utah team immense credit for continuing to find ways to win. And they can keep winning despite those injuries because they have the depth and the players ready to step up and make plays, which is exactly what's happened so far this year. So that's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. Tomorrow, full-on Oregon breakdown. We're doing film, both sides of the ball, getting you guys ready for Utah's matchup against Oregon. It's going to be a fun one, college game day and everything. Me and Spencer McLaughlin, normally you guys know him as Locked On Pac-12. Maybe some of you also check out his Locked On Duck stuff. He does a great job over there too. We will be recording a crossover that's going to be dropping on Thursday morning. It's going to be a great week of content. It's a great week to be a Ute. So much fun off the high of the USC win and I, even in the little bit I've seen of Oregon, Utah is still going to have a chance in this game. It's going to be incredibly tough. I have no issues with the line being at seven where it is, but once again, how can you, when you bet against Kyle Whittingham, bad things tend to happen. So we'll be talking about that on tomorrow's show with the full tape breakdown of the Oregon Ducks. We look forward to seeing you then.